Welcome to Unofficial Commentary by Young Qualified. I am Adam. This is a topic that I've been thinking about for a little while now. Because anytime there's a mass shooting and people talk about guns and things like that, one of the things that I hear said a lot is that America has a very weird relationship with guns, which they're not wrong. Um, if you look throughout history, and specifically pop culture history, you'll see that the use of a gun is very prevalent, and this is something that's not exclusive to America. I mean, a lot of countries have this. Like, all of our action heroes are all gun-wielding, you know, heroes, with the exception of some superheroes now, but, like, uh, let's look back. We have, like, uh, if you can go back further, the Riflemen, um, all those Westerns, all the Western TV shows that quickly became cop shows and detective shows, and all these people who used not just their wit, but also they had a... A trusty sidearm with them to to ensure that they were, you know, enforcing a uh, a very simple and simplistic view of morality on everyone that you couldn't really disagree with them on because it's it's pretty obvious who was right and who was wrong and what was going on there. So it to say that America doesn't have a weird relationship with a gun with guns is uh, diminutive. Um, that said. That's not the only issue. And I've been thinking about this a lot lately. One of the things, I have not quite uh, clipped sound bites yet, but I want to, the sound bite that I wanted to clip for this, it was um, during the 2016 presidential election, um, Trump said at one point, we're going to win so much, you're going to get tired of winning. And then on Twitter, I saw someone comment on a post that said, you're, um, he was wrong about that. He was wrong about one thing. He said we'd be tired of how much we're winning. And one of the things that bothers me about this is that the American political system isn't a game. It's not a contest. It's not a lottery. It's not a video game. It's not Monopoly. It's not Clue. It's utilizing public funding to the benefit of everyone not just certain people. So to say we're winning is not looking at the process the right way. To say that we're going to get tired of winning because we're winning so much, it's, it's quite honestly ridiculous to have it that way. So one of the things that I was thinking about is that America doesn't have a problem with guns. It has a problem with everything needs to be adversarial. Everything needs to have a winner and a loser. Everything needs to be a fight, an argument, something. There needs to be some element of conflict to everything that happens. So flip around on TV. Or better yet, um, go to any channel that targets older people. Um, this is probably because they show these commercials more plentifully there. Okay, In between commercials for um, lawyers who are trying to swindle people out of their money... With, um, what's it called? With, uh, telling them about various lawsuits that they can get involved in, class action lawsuits, and, um, various drugs that they can put themselves on, which is a whole other issue that I should probably address at some point. And the American, uh, the weirdness in America about how we have to ask our doctors for what experimental drugs we want to be on when that's not our job as the patient. But, and between those, and between Medicare D supplement plans, retirement plans, reverse mortgages, and all that good stuff, you'll see commercials for um, as seen on TV stuff. Because as seen on TV stuff is usually cheaply made, usually very shitty quality, and they charge a hell of a high markup on it to try and get you to do it. Um, so, when we look at these, a lot of the ones that they target on this channel are things that, for some reason, everyone's preparing for an apocalypse, or a war, or something. It's like, okay, I saw a commercial for Ring, the doorbell. Now, Ring is a doorbell, if you don't know what it is, it's something that you attach to your house, attach to your Wi-Fi, you download the app, and when someone rings the doorbell, or when it's motion activated, you can see that, who's there. Now, that's a great thing for, if you have a delivery coming, or if you have something like that, you can speak to the delivery driver, where they want it to hide it, or things like that. 
the commercial they have for it is a guy working out in, at the gym, and he gets a notification that two guys are trying to break into the house. I'm not saying break-ins don't happen in broad daylight, because I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain they do. Um, but typically, break-ins are going to happen at night, not in, in the middle of broad daylight, unless you're a really stupid criminal. If you're dumb enough to be breaking into someone's house in the middle of the day, you're not going to notice the ring doorbell there to be able to comment on it to your uh, your uh, your partner in crime. And also, if you're doing that, you're you're going to walk past the house first to see that it's there. Then you're going to go around the side because it's not a full uh, it's not a full surveillance system, it's just the front door surveillance system. Which leads me to my next problem. Why are you advertising this as something to deter crime? Because I don't think that there is any causal link between deterring that, between like, having a ring and having less likely that your house is going to be broken into. So, that's one thing. Um, the sunglasses, the, the tax sunglasses, they talk about them being useful in tactical situations. 97, I would say, percent of people on U.S. soil are not going to need sunglasses for a tactical situation where you can see a sniper. I think 97 is too high of a percentage. But 97, like, what situation are you anticipating that we need to have this? You're selling it by, basically what they're doing is they're trying to say to you, when the war happens, we're ready for you. But they're preparing you for a war that's not in any way coming unless the person who's in charge right now starts it. Um, and if you're buying these for a tactical situation, then you probably support him, so you probably don't think that war's going to happen anyway. The only war you're preparing for is a civil war, which is also probably not going to happen unless they're stupid. Um, so, there is... Uh, what else is there? There's like... The brand TAC, T-A-C, there's all the tactical shit. They have, like, the, the TAC lighter, which is, like, electric-powered. Um, TAC sunglasses. The, um, all kinds of shit like that. But it's all designed where it's, like, even if you get, like, a dash cam. It's, like, a dash cam is something that's inherently going to be, um, used for an accident. Like, and that's the thing. Instances on the road where you get into a, uh, a fender bender, something like that, is referred to as an accident. Because 9.5 out of 10 times, it's not intentional. You're not being rammed by someone who's trying to do something to you or anything like that. But the commercial shows situations where people are intentionally destroying vehicles. And if you go based on these commercials and see what kind of things they, they say are going to happen that you need this product to prevent from happening to you, you would think the world's a much scarier place than it is. Now, that's just the TV feeding you that. Then you go on social media, and you have things that are blatantly blowing things out of proportion, and blowing things not even out of proportion, but completely incorrect information. Like, my mom showed me this thing once. It was uh, a guide to spray paint left on the road in front of houses. You may have seen this, too, because it made the rounds uh, a few years ago, maybe. Now, what, what it is is... If you've been driving ever, or you walk, or, you know, if you use a road at any point, you'll notice there are these spray-painted symbols on the road um, all over the place. And they are for utility workers to be able to see where the gas lines are, where the electrical lines are, where the water pipes are, sewage, all that. So it's for them to see what's going on. Now, Mary Sue, the soccer mom, doesn't know this, so she assumes that it's... So, I don't know where it came from initially, to be completely honest. Who came up with this system? Because it's so blatantly wrong, but it gets shared because people don't understand what it is. And what they're saying is, like, if it's this symbol, it means that the house is unoccupied. If it's this symbol, it means that the house is only sometimes occupied. If it's this symbol, it means that they're affluent and they have a lot of money and you should hit this place for a, a burglary or a robbery. But none of that's true. They're utility symbols for utility workers, so that way they can do their job without blowing up the neighborhood, or drowning the neighborhood, or cutting off water to the neighborhood. Um, so that's that problem. Um, what else is there? There is the automatic assumption that everyone making minimum wage 
is out to get you. Um, I don't know if you've seen this. Um, I've seen multiple times where it's like the person working the register. If you go, don't give your credit card to the drive-thru because the person who's taking your card will put it down with a receipt paper over it and stencil it so they can get your card number and they can buy things. That probably has happened like twice. And now it's a thing you gotta be careful of and no one gives their credit card through there. Um, it's also easily traceable if that did happen. Um, what else was there? Um, oh, the cashback scam. Where apparently people at the register can ask for you to get cash back. And then when you say, I don't want it, they'll just give it to the next person in line who happens to be a customer, who happens to be their friends. That way they can pass it off and get free $20. And it's like, I've worked in several retail places in my life and never once has it given the option for the cashier to add cash back um, to the transaction from their end. It's always got to be on the end of the customer. They have to do it from there. I mean, I guess in some grocery stores could probably do it, but um, because they have weird systems. I've never worked in a grocery store, but like I've worked in drug stores. I've worked in uh, clothing retailers and other places, and it, it, that's not how it works. It's just it's designed to scare people, and all of these things are designed to create a us-versus-them mentality. We have things other people don't. They want to take our stuff. That's what they're always trying to do. They're always trying to take our things that we worked to get, and they aren't working as hard as us, and they, so they want it without having to work for it, which is not the case. And I think that's the fundamental problem with the American political system we have today, is that it's adversarial to the point where if you... Anything that you want to do to help people who are less fortunate and are... Uh, less, what's it called, uh, less able to do what they need to, it's viewed as you're taking it away from me and giving it to someone who isn't working as hard. Now, a lot of the things that are, that you hear said by more conservative, uh, pundits are things like, get a better job, work harder, get another job, do this, get a third job, do, and it's, it's all things like that, all things that... In, in their sense, it seems simple. But, again, I'm going to use the example that I put on Twitter. One of my co-workers, he's got a kid. Kid goes to school. He doesn't drive because he came from the city. You don't need to drive in the city, and he moved out to Long Island. So he's working on getting his license. And he works with me. So he's got an Uber everywhere. Now, he's working for minimum wage, which is $11 out here. So he's got to take cabs and Ubers to get everywhere, including getting his son to and from his daycare so he can work at the job that I work with him at. And the expectation is not that he needs some kind of public assistant. The expectation in the eyes of these people is that they should easily get a second job. But at what expense? Here's the thing. There's only so many hours in the day, and I get that a lot of jobs are low skill. The job I have is low skill, and that's what I tell people at work, not customers. I, I mean, I tell the employees when they start getting, uh, what's it called, they start complaining. It's like about what shift they're working or what they're doing. I say, our job, my job, my boss's job, all low skill. You don't need to have a degree to do it. You don't need to do anything to do it. You can, they can hire someone else in an instant to do my job to the same degree that I do it. That's why they pay so little. If you think you have a skill that you can do well, you're going to get a job that pays more. But working in a retail store, you're not going to get that. So, the, I think I've gotten off track here, but the, the main problem is we need to work to support people who are less fortunate, and one of the things that we can do to help them is to streamline the education system. Because one of the other problems is a lot of what we learn in school is not designed for anything. Like, high school is the, the, the minimum amount of education you're mandated to get by law federally. 
I mean, and people drop out from extenuating circumstances, unexpected pregnancies, expected pregnancies, um, deaths in the family to help out at home. There's all, all manner of reasons why people don't complete high school, which is up to you. If you don't want to finish high school, it's not my decision to sit here and judge. It's not my decision to say you did the right thing or the wrong thing. It's you finished it or you didn't. Say la vie. So, what I'm, what we need to do, though, is while people are in high school, we need to focus more on not so much college readiness, well, that too to an extent, but also destigmatize not going to college. We need to do that. We need to focus on life preparedness because there are a lot of life skills that people leave high school not knowing. Like, it would help out a lot of people if there was a class, Fundamentals of Auto Mechanics was a mandatory class where you were able to understand the basic functions of how a car works, not how to fix it, but the basic functions of how a car works So that way you know if you're getting screwed when you take it to a mechanic and you don't have to pay as much. What the going rate is for things at a mechanic. Things like that. Cooking and housekeeping. How to do basic housekeeping repairs. How to replace a toilet. How to change an outlet. Things like that. Um... Reading for understanding, how to read things beyond the bias, how to read things, how to fact check. Um, fundamentals of health. And I'm not saying what the health class system is now, which is, the. let me tell you what my health class was, okay? Etiquette, which was how to set a table, which I've used not once since. Um... I don't even know why we had so many etiquette classes. It's like, and the etiquette videos they gave us were so dated. It started with like, when you go out on a date, um, be sure to opt for a a seat in the non-smoking section. In New York, (coughs) smoking has been banned in restaurants since I was a kid. And they never updated these tapes. And it's all dating etiquette and things like that. Which, all kinds of etiquette that we don't, use, and it's like, it's all things that we normally pick up in, you know, life, it's things that we do, it's like, um, but like, elementary finances should be a class, where it's like, how to balance a checkbook, how to check your credit score, what your credit score is, how to get a mortgage, how to buy a house, how to save for retirement, That was an elective in my school. We had an elective on how to live financially sound. That should have been a mandatory class. You know what is a mandatory class, though? Chemistry. I understand you want us to do three years of science. I understand that. I understand we got to do three years of math. But the thing is, if this is the the legal minimum amount of education that we need to have to live... And to not have an issue going forward, chemistry, biology, uh, algebra 2, trigonometry, all of these things are never going to be used again. I took statistics in college, and I have not used anything I learned there at all. I have not used once any of the pre-calculus math that I've had to do. I've not used trigonometry, except for helping someone else who is currently in trigonometry. And I have not used anything from any science class ever. It's ridiculous. It's insanity. These things, I understand that we need to have it as an option there. To give kids the opportunity to explore and see what they like to do. But the problem is these shouldn't be mandatory classes because what you do when you make math mandatory and you don't have someone there who can explain it well and do the math right and make the kids want to do it, what you end up doing is burning them out, which is not what you want to do. Oh, the health thing that I went off topic on, but it should be like eating healthy, exercising, time management to be in that class because that's part of healthy living, mental health preparedness, um... Like, dealing with doctors, dealing with health insurance. These are all things that you're never explained at any point 
growing up that need to be explained to you. And it's like, it's never done. There's no, there's no class for it in high school. There needs to be, though. Um, fundamentals of law. How to deal with um, being sued, suing someone, or being in a criminal case would also be a good class to have. But, like, things that are going to impact you for the rest of your life need to be uh, classes in high school at the bare minimum. And that could be, that's more helpful than a freshman mm-hmm. seminar. What are you going to teach? Well, I mean, a freshman seminar is going to teach you how to study and how to do things like that. But the thing is, schools need to be more open to teaching about trade school options. Where it's like, if you're out here, if you're not going into nursing or a trade, what are you doing? It's like, we still need people to go to medical school. We still need people to go to um, trade school for plumbing. We still need people to go to all these things. And the problem is they're not... There's there's no opportunity to explore them. And it's almost demonized, the thought of not going to college to get your bachelor's. And I think going out of high school to get your bachelor's is only a good idea if you 110% know what you want to do for the rest of your life. Because look at me. I'm 24. I have a bachelor's degree in political science. I was going to go to law school. I started taking actual law classes that weren't in high school. And I hated every minute of it. That's what the problem is. If you don't know what you're doing going into... If you have a kid and your kid isn't 100% sure of what they want to do for the rest of their life, send them to a local community college. And that's where we'll end off for today. Um, Next week we'll be back with another topic that I've not decided on yet.